better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to be talking about Venom Lethal Protector Series 4. But for some reason they're calling it Series 2. Um, and this is issue number two. <laughs> it's by David Michelini and Farid Karami, who does the artwork on it who does a great job. I really like the art on this book, and I will say, for me at least, Michelini is doing a better job of just telling a streamlined storyline in this. So I do appreciate it for that reason. There's some great action, there's some good story beats, there's some good dumb humor with uh, Venom and Eddie. Uh, but like typical Michelini, and there's the digital code, boom, there you go. So first person to put that code in, we, surprise, we do surprise giveaways on this channel. Anytime I get a digital comic uh, code, I give it away. So the first person to put that code in, go to that website, put the code in, you'll get a copy of this book right here. And if you want to leave your review down below, you can definitely do that because we're going to get into some spoilers. I'm going to basically discuss this. I do like a review slash discussion. So we'll talk about a few story beats and then I'll kind of give you my opinion on it. Uh, but this one is Venom is now hired by Silver Sable to complete her mission, which is to protect this item from being stolen by these villains, uh, you know, called the Vanguards or the Vanguardians or whatever. And it's this new cult group or whatever. And they want to steal this item that Nick Fury has. And Silver Sable's been hired to protect it. But one of her teammates was killed in the first attempt that, you know, these villains made to try to steal this item. You know, her she lost a teammate and another one got injured. So she needs to replace that teammate with someone and she wants to get revenge. And so she hires Venom because he happened to be there during that kerfuffle in the first issue. So again, it's a more streamlined storyline. Okay, you got Venom, he's getting involved, and the main reason he wants to get involved is because this kid Pablo that he met in some of the Spider-Man annuals from way back when, when David Michelini was originally creating the character of Venom, because he's the co-creator of Venom, and he's writing these issues here, and, uh, and he has this character Pablo, who was going through some tough times, who worked for the Vanguard, and then has turned against him, and he's now on the run. So Venom's like, okay, I'm going to do this mission and I'm going to get paid by Silver Sable. And instead of using the money for himself, because he's sleeping in the sewers, Eddie's like, I'm going to give that money to Pablo so he can get back on his feet and go to school and, and live a normal life. So still a really good dude in Eddie. You know, like Michelini is trying to write him to, to be more heroic and anti-hero than just villainy. Because in the last one, he was kind of back and forth with it. And I guess that makes sense for the timeline because this takes place, I guess, before Lethal Protector, the first one. So weird. I don't know why they called these Lethal Protectors. And I don't know why they called the last one Lethal Protector 1 and this one Lethal Protector 2 because this is the fourth series that is uh, called Lethal Protector. The third mini series, uh, but the fourth, like, you know, storyline series. So, I don't know, whatever. In trade paperback form, it's a little cleaner because they put like colon, you know, something, something, whatever. So uh, so they clean it up a little bit better in the trade paperback formats. But for the single issues, it's a little wonky. But at least the storyline, like I said, is more of a make sense moving, you know, point A to point B type story. Nick Fury, his helicarrier gets uh, attacked and he decides, all right, I'm not going to hire Silver Sable. She kind of screwed up the last time. So he's essentially firing her. Uh, but she's like, look, I'm not here really just for the money. I want revenge. I lost a teammate and I have Venom now. And yeah, Nick Fury's like, yeah, you hired a psychopath. No offense. And, and you know, Eddie's like, no, none taken. <laughs> Which I'm like, okay, that's cool. There's some banter there. But obviously in recent years, they've tried to add some continuity and lore with, you know, the symbiotes in Nick Fury. And this is the Nick Fury that would have been, you know, exposed to Project V during Vietnam and he's not really making a reference to that, but it's fine. I mean, it's not that that's that important. He's not not making a reference, and he's not making a reference. So it's like Michelini kind of walking that line of maybe they, there's a history there, and then but we're not going to get into it because maybe I don't know the full history. So that's fine. It, that's not a, a, a deal breaker or anything like that in the comics, but just something I'm pointing out continuity-wise. But there's these great shots. Like the art, like I said, is amazing. There's these awesome shots of Silver Sable and Venom just cutting loose on bad guys in this one. So I really dig that. Uh, the one thing, though, I don't dig is Michelini's, like, pacing in this issue. He has this uh, where he's, like, you know, this thing where he wants to jump to the Vulture. What is the Vulture doing? Because he was set up in the last issue. He stole some information to learn about Eddie Brock, and he brought it to Doctor Doom. So he's been hired by Doctor Doom to do a couple things, you know, like uh, steal a couple things and, and give that information to Dr. Doom. So they keep cutting to him. And then they also keep cutting to this hospital 
uh, where Cardiac works. And Cardiac, at this point in the comics, I, I think in the 90s he was more villain than, than anti-hero. So th maybe this is Michelini trying to do more anti-hero stuff with him because he still did some good uh, in the comics around this time, but not purely good. But he did do a couple, you know, anti-hero slash, you know, protecting people that were close to him kind of stuff when in the 90s. So uh, it's fine. It's not, it, again, nothing here is this deal breaker. I'll nitpick a little bit uh, just for lore sake and continuity sake, but it's not that bad. It's a cool battle, though, I will say with Vulture and Cardiac. And Cardiac's one of those characters that does not get used enough, in my opinion. And I, I like that he does have somewhat of a conscience. You know, it's like he's, if he sees people in trouble and he's able to help, he will help, even though he's, you know, walks that line sometimes and he does fight Spider-Man. Uh, but he does have, he in more recent years, he's become more of a good guy than being like an anti-hero. Um, but this one is, is he's kind of like, straddling that line still a little bit during this timeline or during this part of the continuity so uh so you have him battling vulture which i like like i said it's cool to see those two fight but the way michelini shifts from one story to the other it's just like i don't know it, it, they just have these things like while at the longevity research center and then you're like oh, okay you're just interrupting this battle to just jump to there okay fine and then this gets into a battle and then boom while at you know and it's just always while at while at and, and it's, it gets repetitive and i'm kind of like oh, i wish the editors or someone would have just reworded some of those a little bit differently i understand that's kind of how things you know michelini did things back then and it's very kind of retro feel to it and stuff but it's like yeah i know this is set back in the mid 90s but not everything has to be the way it was in the 90s you can clean some of this up because it just feels a little repetitive and redundant. Again, nitpicks. You know, overall, I had fun reading this. I really did. I, I, compared to the last Lethal Protector, this at least feels like it's just moving forward. And the hiccups are minor hiccups. Uh, they don't take me out of the story completely like the first one did. Um, and this one, they bring in a new like so super soldier type thing that, you know, the bad guys are working on. This time it's a, a woman cyborg uh, hybrid and she kicks a lot of butt. She, you know, messes up Venom, cut, almost cuts him in half at one point. So there's some cool action in this. And like I said, Fareed's art and the visuals are really what pull me into this more than anything. Anytime a Michelini hiccup pops up, I'm like, eh, I don't like that. But the art is so good and it's so engaging that I'm like, oh, cool. Including a scene where Venom has to stop the helicarrier from crashing into New York. And, and I won't say if he does it or not. I don't want to spoil that because it's a cool tense moment with like a nine panel grid, you know, kind of Watchmen style a little bit, but it's really neat. It's really well done. I like some of the art techniques Fareed does. And I like the, the kind of the cliffhanger at the end where you have Vulture and Cardiac fighting each other and Vulture's taking so long to deliver what he promised to Doom that uh, Doom actually shows up uh, and it's really cool. So yeah, spoilers for the last page, but Doom shows up and he's like, yeah, no, I'm and I don't even know if it's really Doom. It's probably a Doom bot because I the, I think the real Doom is actually in Latveria still. So I would imagine he probably sent a Doom bot over. But he claims, at least at the last page here, that it's actually Doctor Doom. So we'll see if he is in, in the next issue. But this overall has been fun. And, and Silver Sable is one of those characters that I'm like, eh, if you do her well, she's kind of a fun character. Her being in this for like, you know what? I don't care if Nick Fury, you know, keeps the contract or not. Venom, I'm still going to pay you a thousand dollars a day or whatever she says it is uh to help me and he's like oh cool i'm gonna give that money to pablo and then pablo unfortunately gets captured by the bad guys in this unbeknownst to venom so there's probably going to be some twists there but the fact that eddie wants to use this money to not get himself out of laying in the sewers at night but to help somebody that you know he promised he would help is amazing and i think that's a cool little heroic thing that they're adding in for eddie in this storyline uh, something selfless and i dig that so for me it's a fun book it's not a, an amazing book but luckily the artwork is strong enough for me to kind of get over some of those uh you know writing hiccups that i feel again this is my opinion um michelini is a great writer he's done a lot of great stuff on spider-man and other characters throughout the years so i'm just a humble you know fan you know give my opinion uh, but there are some things that i'm like eh, eh, but they're all nitpicks overall this is a cleaner story than the first one and that's why I'm going to give this one a three and a half out of five. Um, th that's my rating overall for this issue because, yeah, I'm I'm digging it. And I honestly can't wait to read issue three. And I, I love Dr. Doom. He's my favorite villain in all of comics, of all comics, Marvel, DC, everyone. He's my absolute favorite. So 
Uh, now that he's entering the story fully, you know, and, and going to be face to face with some of these characters, I'm curious to see how Michelini writes them and uh, and how well uh, that will be executed and what Venom and uh, Doctor Doom's interactions will be like because these are two characters that have never really met in the comics. You had a story where Doctor Doom made a Venom bomb with symbiote, you know, DNA or whatever, and created some bombs for it. But it's never really Doctor Doom meeting the symbiote and interacting with Venom. So I'm curious to see that first meeting happen in this book, at least in this continuity, without like a what if or another world story. So yeah, let me know what you think of Venom Lethal Protector 2 in the comments below. If you have a different opinion, same opinion, whatever it is, let me know and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. I'll have more episodes to you guys very soon. So stay subscribed so you don't miss out. See you in the future. Peace.